Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 3 in a best of 3 between Eugene and Gal O'Neill. This is the semi-final of the Great Paradox Tourney. So all to play for in this one. Both players winning one game of the series so far. Gal O'Neill in the first one with his 12th SS Panzer versus Eugene's first Panzerna. Then in the second game we saw Eugen bring it back with the 4th Armoured versus Gal O'Neill's 21st Panzer. And in this one we're going to be seeing the 1st Panzerna versus the 21st Panzer. Both divisions we've seen before, but this time on show. So let's have a chat about what can go on in this map. So the 21st Panzer struggled on Odon versus the 4th Armoured previously. And I think it's because the 21st Panzer really can utilise the longer ranges with the Panzer Habitzer and the S307 pack and also had nothing to deal with the 4th Armoured's uh, B26B Marauder. However this time around we have a nice open map which really suits the S307 pack and Panzer Habitzer and there is no B26B on the other side of things. So the 21st Panzer probably a much better choice versus the 1st Panzerna on this map. However the 1st Panzerna can also do a lot of work here since they do have the Cromwell 6s. And a lot of people would maybe write off the Cromwell 6s versus things like the Estro 7 packs. However, you've got to realize that the Estro 7 pack only has two armor here. So a Cromwell 6 at max range can use the fire position trick in order to pin down an Estro 7 pack and then actually find the kill onto an Estro 7 pack with a HE shell because the armor is so low on those vehicles. So that's something we've got to look out for as well. And Newton might try and take advantage of that. However, um, other than that, in Phase A, a lot of the units that uh, Eugen can put out only have 1,000 meter range. So it could end up that if the Cromwell 6s die to an unfavorable engagement, Eugen will be left in a pretty sticky spot in Phase A, which is not what he wants playing the first Panzerna. Let's have a look at some of the units going down anyway, as that will give us a tell as what we're likely to see throughout the rest of the game. You know, of recon down here for Eugen. He's got a couple of rifles and command infantry going for the town. He's also got the M5 half track there with likely some Dragoni. And then we have rifles, recon, and command for the center of the map. And on the top side, it's going to be more rifles, recon, command, accompanied by the Cromwell 6 that I mentioned earlier. On the top side, the Gallo Neil is going to be bringing in the S07 pack and the 251 with the spear troop up there. Recon for the mid in the form of the 222s and the Aufklader. And then on the bottom side, it's going to be double Panzergrenz with the command infantry and a 259 for support. And on the very bottom, we have an AT gun with the command infantry and the speed troop. So relatively spread across both sides. We see a Staghound being added to Eugen's start down here going into the town. And that might be able to help deal with something like a 259 that uh, we saw we saw that matchup actually come up in the first game where the 12th ss panzer went up against the um first panzerna however this time around the 222s actually have quite a lot of veterancy so it's going to be a lot less likely that these 222s lose out to a staghound or the 259 here now it looks like this stair cam was actually moved to the center before the game started, Eugen. Just trying to make things difficult for me today. But off we go. Let's have a look at where these uh, units are heading. So pretty standard for in the town there. 259 is just going to be rolling up onto the main road and trying to pop a couple of infantry squads before they can unload. 222s might be trying to find some damage onto any infantry they find in the center, but this stag hound also going to be looking for those kills as well. Most important thing will be who spots what first. So Eugen has seen the S307 pack here and has spotted some half tracks moving in on the bottom side. Gal O'Neill can see the Cromwell 6 on the top and some of the infantry advancing in the mid as well. So currently a plus one for Eugen on the board, even with the small salient on the bottom side from Gal O'Neill here. Gal can probably work out because of this that there isn't anything defending the bottom side of the town. 
We see the stag hound now zooming down into the town, where it will hopefully help engage with the half tracks here and the 259. It's really up to uh, Gallo Neal to find the kill with this 259 and the 20mm. Definitely can do so at that range. But Staghound's going to one shot, one kill, the 259. Not messing around this time. We'll roll down to the bottom side to find out what he's up against. Now, this pack 38 has a good chance of actually popping the Staghound if it finds itself in line of sight. But not too much happening on this top side so far. Rifle's just moving into position, trying to creep that front line forwards a little bit. It is giving Eugen 52% territory lead at the moment, which is pretty important. Dragoni here trying to sneak up, maybe find a Piet onto the U304. That would be very helpful indeed to stop some of the fire support coming out of that vehicle there. Looks like the Dragoni jumped back in to try and find a surrender, but the Panzergrenfjeller are in range, so that's not going to happen. It's just going to be, uh, we've just got to see if uh, Eugen can get his command into range of the Dragoni here, as they do find a kill onto that half track. So that's pretty nice. That's going to stop so much MG fire coming down onto these rifles. Staghound might also try and find a shot onto this U304 as well to take that out. Looks like the rifles have stopped up here. AT gun is arriving. Cromwell 6 is going to be falling back. Doesn't want to engage the S307 pack from within range. Wants to be going for the uh, fire position command there. But other than the bottom side, Panzergrens are being pinned down slowly but surely. The Staghound really helping out with that. Doing a lot of damage to the Panzergrens here. M5 hard track also moving up on the top side of the town and making quite a lot of ground. However, the 222 is waiting and going to be creeping around the corner there very shortly. Six pounder does find a kill on one of the half tracks, but nothing significant going down from Gal on the top side. He's definitely going to have to bring in something like a Panzerhabitzer to take out that six pounder. He could also choose to maybe bring in the 257 mortar carrier. We'll have to wait and see what he chooses to do. I'm surprised to not see these half tracks trying to exploit the bottom side of the map here. In the town, second unit of Panzergrenadiers do get pinned down. Not going to be killed off or surrendered due to the Panzergrenadier. But uh, it looks like Galonio is slowly relinqu relinquishing control of this town to Eugen. Pack 38 does reveal itself by shooting at the Staghound, so Eugen knows that that's about. And rifles have been spotted in the open down here by the Alfklara, and the 222 is going to do a serious amount of damage to those, which may open up a little bit of ground in the centre there. And looks like the front line is going to hold for now. Second Cromwell 6 has joined us. Eugen bringing that onto the field. Looks like the command carrier that brought in the command infantry is dead. However, a half track did go down in reply Staghound trying to sneak out there and find a shot onto the 259 which it did got the shooter wounded but a pack 38 moving in line of sight of that road is going to force that Staghound off it command carrier in the centre being killed off by the 222 so currently it looks like Eugen's in a pretty sticky spot he was winning out in the town but with the pack 38s all over the place, it's pretty hard for him to manoeuvre this Staghound in a way that he can find kills onto units like this 257 and the U304. Here he did find the kill onto the 259. That's got its uh, tracks wheel destroyed, so not going to be very long until he gets that kill. And the Staghound there actually finishing off the Panzergrenadiers as well. That's two units with uh, tracks wheels destroyed now. It's a race against time for... Gallo Neal to get this pack 38 round the edge of this house and in line of sight of that staghound. Sexton is arriving for Eugen. That's going to be his choice in order to deal with the pack 38s. Because those pack 38s really are holding him up on this bottom side at the moment. He was doing great before because his staghound was able to support his rifles quite nicely. But now he needs to take care of the pack 38s before the staghound can do so. 
and he might also be able to get his Cromwell 6 um, down there to help out. But currently that sitting in the center of the map. Command infantry have found themselves kind of stuck in the open down here. Panzer 4C are going to be coming under fire from the Cromwell 6. Staghound going to be trying to engage the Panzer 4C. So that Staghound fast moving all the way up. Very close range. Does get the shot off very quickly with its fast aim time. If the Cromwell helps out, I think Eugene might be able to deal with his Panzer 4C quite handily. Although so far, the Staghound doing a great job. Definitely has the advantage. 6 AP versus 5 armor and then 8 AP versus 4 armor. You can see the Staghound there popping that uh, Panzer 4C. Sexton has killed one of the Pack 38s on the very bottom side. Another Staghound joining the party down here as it kills off a half track. 51% territory lead still in favor of Eugen. However, Galoneal is making a move on this top side. A lot of this, a lot of these units will be spotted. However, um, Eugen knows exactly what's coming. He's got his six pounder out of the tree line. He's probably going to wait until the Brumbar gets really close and then just move it back in and try and get a kill that way. And uh, as long as that six pounder is alive. There is uh, pretty much nothing that Gallo Neil can do about that. Speed Troop are going to reveal the rifles there, and unfortunately they're just in a very bad spot right now in front of a Brumbar and a Panzer 4C. Not going to last very long. Engine stall onto this Staghound. That Pack 38 has plenty of time on target to kill that. The Sexton is going to have to find its shots very quickly, otherwise the Staghound dies, and the Staghound has gone down nothing that Eugene could have done about that. We do see the stag count here taken out by what looks like the pack 43 brought in as reinforcement. Eugene can deal with that with the fire position from the Cromwell 6 but he's got to be careful that he doesn't get outflanked by this 222. Pack 43 now firing at the command infantry as they move towards these Alpha Clutter. So this Staghound helping out by putting some HE down range at the Speed Troop here. However, the HE on its gun is only one. So you can see how minimal that effect is on the Speed Troop there. But with more rifles arriving, this is really putting the pressure on Galoneal. Galoneal only has one unit of Panzergrands versus five units of rifles, a unit of Dragoni here, and the Command Infantry. There's also this unit of Rifles further back. Rifles moving in on the bottom side now. Speed Troop are going to win out against this weird Dalsy due to the machine gun. But I'm not sure that's what uh, Eugene is completely concerned about at the moment. Especially with his 6-pounder dying on this top side. It looks like it went to try and get a kill onto either the Panzer 4C or the Brumba. Didn't find it. And that's put uh, Eugene in a pretty sticky spot on the top side. I would have liked to have seen him just be a bit more patient there and um, move it in later on but uh, a Cromwell 5 going to be the choice of unit to try and take on the SG07 pack Cromwell 6 could be used to fire position that and then the Cromwell 5 can zoom in to sweep up the kills but uh, Cromwell also being brought into the town now we have moved into phase B so the bigger units are going to start to arrive 257 is being purchased by Gallo Neal and that coming in down here should help out control some of these rifle squads. But at the moment, Galoneal doesn't really have anything to push with. He's got a couple units of Panzergrens coming up to, to reinforce, but uh, Eugene's going to find himself on the edge of this town very quickly. And he's also got the Staghound to uh, pin down those Panzergrens in the open. So you can see the Staghound just rushing forwards here. Probably realises there's not much to stop him. So he might even find a kill onto these half tracks and the 257 uh, before uh, Galineal can get any significant AT in here. One half track down. Looks like this Cromwell 6 went for the engagement on the pack 43, but didn't manage to micro that properly. So Eugen loses his, uh, loses out that battle. Tracks and wheels damage there onto the Cromwell 6. Cromwell 6 has also died on the top side. By the looks of things. SJ7 pack must have found that kill up there. 
Brimbar still cleaning up infantry as Gallo Neil continues to make this push. So there is just like a ton of pressure up here from Gallo Neil. Eugen really needs to find an answer to these vehicles, otherwise he's going to put himself in a very bad spot. 17 pounder has been brought in. Maybe that will find the kill onto the SGO 7 pack and the Panzer 4C. And then he'll be able to secure that top side once again. But in the bottom, it's still a 50-50 across the board because Eugen's pushed so far up. The stag count. There's plenty of ammunition left, but Eugen's just being careful with that as it has been pinned slightly. The 257 though is gone. Never mind, got forced to fall back here. I thought it got killed, but looks like it came under fire from the stag count and managed to get out of there. Cromwell 4, zooming down to this bottom side. Going to be trying to support against the Panzergrenfuhrer here and the speed troop that are still engaging this weird Dalsy. I can't believe that engagement is still going on. The, the speed troop actually ran out of ammunition before killing the Zwier Dalsy. So Panzergrenfuhrer dead here. Speed troop going to zoom to follow. And that's opened up a huge sailing on the bottom side for, for Eugen. He's gained a ton of ground here moving in these rifles. And this Staghound really needs to find some kills find and find them quickly onto these uh, half tracks and 259s because otherwise the 259s might be able to overrun him at close range. Saying that however, the 259s are getting very low on 20 more ammunition. Cromwell 5 alongside the Sexton has found the pin onto the pack 43 here. And look how much damage that Cromwell 6 shot did to the pack 43. Crazy stuff. SG07 pack has fallen back on this top side. 17 pounder is going to be engaging the Panzer 4C. It looks like Gallo Neil had spotted that with his speed troop, so was careful with the SG07 pack but was not so careful with the Panzer 4C, which is most likely going to go down to the combination of the Cromwell 5 and the 17-pounder. But it's interesting to see how much each player can see across the board. Plenty of recon from both players, revealing almost all of the units on both sides. That's exactly what you like to see. Cromwell 6 here, going to be moving up, trying to find the kill onto the Pack 43. It's got one shot before the Pack 43 fires back. Will find the pin, won't find the kill. Brumbar has a chance to kill the Cromwell 6, honestly, if that Brumbar lands a shot into the rear armor of a Cromwell. It could very easily <laughs> kill it off. Cromwell's more concerned with killing off this Pack 43, though, which is which makes sense. And Pack 43 down. So that's going to open up the center of the map quite a lot. And on this top side, the Panzer 4C is still pinned. 17 pounder not being able to find line of sight just yet, though. That Cromwell 6 is going to have to sort of disengage from that broom bar if it can. And on this bottom side, looks like things have finally started to sort themselves out. 259 is burning there. One unit of Panzergrens did get into the town. But with a two star Sherman 5 on the way. It's not going to be long until that starts popping. The Befell Panzer IV, the Panzer IV C, and all these other half tracks that have shown themselves. That Sherman V, good chance of killing that Befell Panzer IV, pops the Panzer IV C very easily indeed. We have some artillery fire coming down onto the Panzergrands and the Panzergrandfuhrer. But this engagement is very important to watch. The Panzer IV versus the Sherman V, because if either of those go down, going to relinquish control in the other direction so with the Sherman 5 now dying there Gallo Neal does have the pressure with the Befell Panzer 4 but he needs to get that up into a position where it can provide immediate fire support onto these rifles with its own machine guns Stagkown now having to go at the Panzer 4C <laughs> probably not the best idea on the top side the Panzer 4C did die there as well I'm really not convinced about uh, Gallo Neal's love for the Panzer 4Cs. I don't find them very useful at all when I play myself with the 21st Panzer. Maybe I'm just wrong, but um, generally I haven't had much success with them. 
And in the two games that we've seen Gallo Neal play with the 21st Panzer, the Panzer, one, Panzer 4 Cs haven't been doing him many favours either. I think they're just very good, like value for money on paper, but in practice they don't really do too much. Six pounder here has found range onto the Brum bar, or line of sight onto the Brum bar at close range. And that might end up with a kill. Cromwell 6 has forced that to fall back there as well. Sexton's still doing work. I kind of feel like Gallo Neal's going to run out of infantry here. He's currently got Panzergrens pushing into this town again. And Eugen's had plenty of rifles in this town for a very, very long time. Six Pounder has found a shot towards the Panzer 4H, but not going to find the kill. That's, that's very important indeed. Panzer 4H surviving that engagement. Crazy stuff. So we now see reveal the enemy Aufklader in the middle of the map. Cromwell 6 is going to help take that out. Firefly has arrived on the top side and is going to be engaging the S307 pack. So things starting to really fall apart for Gallo Neal on this top side push. And he doesn't really have much pressure on the bottom side either. So unless he brings out a King Tiger or something for this top side, he is very unlikely to be able to push these forces back. The Cromwell 5 able to just sort of fast move up and get the kill onto the S-307 pack there and the Firefly 1C as well. Also able to just do what it wants. There is nothing here that can stop it. Maybe the pack 43 can find a kill but there is a Sexton on the field and uh, Eugen could easily bring in another one to deal with any AT guns that show up on the top side. So I'm not convinced that uh, a pack 43 is the best idea. Brumbart does go down there. It's not going to be long until these Panzergrens die as well. Eugen just going to be running forwards there with normal commands, not even attack move. Just going to try and make those surrender rather than waste time trying to kill them. Which is exactly what he should be doing. Six pounder. Finding line of sight once again onto the Panzer IV and finds the kill. That is extremely important here. We have a reinforcing Sherman V coming in from Eugen. And without a Panzer IV there to contest that Sherman V, that Sherman V can run all over any infantry that comes up to reinforce. And, I mean, there's not even much here anyway. Panzer Grenadiers, far back. Pioneers, quite far back. Panzer IV G trying to find kills on the top side of the town. But, uh... On the top side of the map, pack 43. Can it find a kill onto this Cromwell 5? Going to reveal itself in the process. Speed troop there. Going to get themselves killed off. Crazy stuff. So the Firefly going to be falling back. Eugen doesn't want to lose that to a pack 43. Cromwell 5 here going to be falling back. Not sure it's going to be able to get out of range of a pack 43 anytime soon, though, especially with an engine destroy. Sherman 5 here, arriving on this bottom side, it's just going to make a huge difference. As long as we're still in phase B, but we are moving into phase C in 5 seconds, will Gallo Neal find something that allows him to bring this game back? Because currently he's losing a plus 2 with 58% territory lead in favour of Eugen. And as long as Eugen holds on for this plus 2 for a little bit longer, he's going to put himself in a fantastic position moving on to phase C where he's just going to have to hold on in order to win. Opal Blitz Munition they're going to be going down and this is exactly what you want to be doing with the first Panzerna. Secure your position in phase A and B and then hold on in phase C because there is going to be some rather large armoured units on their way if Gallo Neal does decide to save up for that King Tiger. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to though because he's just under pressure across the entire map. Like every time he spends money on the U-304s with Panzergrenz, that's like 45 points a pop. And that's just going to leave him no points for a King Tiger, which would be perfect for this top side. I'm surprised he did pick a pack 43 to push forwards there. Looks like he's trying to find a kill onto the Firefly. Did kill off the Cromwell. But now a 25 pounder arriving for Eugene. That pack 43 is pretty much done for as long as Eugen can micro his 25 pounder effectively. Cromwell 6 is hammering infantry that's trying to make a push in the center of the map. 6 pounder has found line of sight onto that half track as well. 
I was looking to see if it could see the Panzer 4G, but there is this little bit of tre trees here, which is stopping that. On the bottom, Panzer 4G has been bailed out. That Was that the Staghound? This Staghound, if that was the one to bail out that Panzer 4G, has been an absolute hero this game. Crazy stuff. Loads of kills coming out of it. Even going for the internal fragments onto this Lorraine, rendering it completely useless until it gets resupply. Absolutely crazy. So, yeah, 25 pounder, pins down the pack 43 in a couple shots. That's going to allow the Firefly to just fast move towards it, find the kill. Nothing that Gallo Neil can do on that top side anymore. On the bottom side, the Panzer Grenadiers are completely routed. Lorraine's falling back, these half tracks soon will be as well. And once that smoke clears, that Panzer 4G is a goner. So Firefly still controlling the top of this map. This 25 pounder needs to make sure that it remains on target onto the Pack 43, because that Pack 43, you don't want it to recover and then kill off your Firefly. Firefly is, however, aiming upon the Pack 43, which will make it take a long time to recover. Sexton helping out with the Panzergrens on the bottom. Panzer 4H is coming in to try and hold things off. But versus both the Staghound and the Sherman, I'm not sure it's going to win out. Panzer 4G cleans up some rifles, but still has to get through the 6 pounder. Pack 43 is dead on the top side. 257. His attack moving forwards. I believe that's had that command for a relatively long time. It's just been sort of ping ponging backwards and forwards uh, due to the fallback. But eventually the Firefly is going to pick up that kill. And well, with that 257 dead, there is no presence for Gallo Neal on the top side. 63% territory lead is going to get to 65% most likely. And that's going to push a plus 3 for Eugen. Really a dominating position at this point in the game. The best Galaniel can do is continue to bring in these Befell Panzer IV H's and the normal Panzer IV H's and hope they're enough to hold back the Sherman and rifle push coming out on this bottom side. And he's going to need a King Tiger for the top side. Whether or not he can bring it back in 15 minutes or not is a completely different matter. He is reloading his Lorraine. Has that firing away. And uh, honestly, Eugen is spread pretty thin. But you can see here Gallo Neal's going for a push in the centre. Has now, however, bumped into a 17 pounder, which is going to pop his 2 3 1, no problemo. There's also an Achilles here taking pot shots. And the 17 pounder on the top side is currently killing any half tracks trying to move to the top. 2 3 1. Not going to really be the right reply to a Firefly. This Firefly currently sitting back until the rifles reach these trees. Because it's going to be important that um, Eugen keeps these units alive. Both the Cromwell 6 and the Firefly. And that's why he's letting his rifles go forwards first. Because this could have easily been like another Pack 43 rolling up. And if that gets into the tree line and fires a shot and gets a kill. Then you know Eugen's in a bad spot. But another 17 pounder arriving on the bottom side gets the internal fragments onto the Panzer IV H and a critical ammo, ammo explosion with the second shot. I'm not sure how that quite happens. Internal fragments removes all the ammunition and then a critical ammo explosion occurs. <laughs> yeah, odd. Anyway, 17 pounder can just move into that tree line. As long as it doesn't get pinned by the Lorraine. Might be able to find a kill onto the Panzer IV H. And that's going to pretty much leave Gallo Neal in an impossible position. He's just lost way too many forces at this point. 68% territory lead in favour of Eugen as well. Eugen's actually only 3 minutes from victory anyway due to score. So fantastic job by Eugen for solidifying his lead and really crushing it in phase B and C. It's not often that you see the first Panzerna continue to maintain their momentum going into phase C. But I think with Gallo Neal 
not bringing out a King Tiger for the top side. It really allowed things to fall apart up there. And now anything he brings in that's not a King Tiger won't really do the job. The pack 43s will just get hit by 25 pounds and sextons like I mentioned already. I guess a King Tiger could as well eventually get pinned down by artillery. But um, yeah, it's just uh, a shame for Galanil here. There's just not much he can do. I believe he's just going to let the score tick up at this point. Try his best. But uh, Eugen has pretty much sealed the deal. And uh, what a fantastic series this has been between the two players. Gallo Neal looked very strong in game one with the 12th SS Panzer. He unfortunately got beaten up a bit by the 4th Armoured and the B26Bs in game two. Now uh, Eugen was able to come back. But with Eugen pretty much winning this game, it's going to make him the first person in the Great Paradox Tourney to come back from a 1-0 deficit to win the best of three, which is quite an achievement. Firefly gets the 2-3-1 there. Befell Panzer IV, not going to really do too much against Firefly. In the center, an AT gun was brought up, but with the overwhelming amount of armor here, that's not going to last too long. One minute left until Eugen finds victory. Can he find the plus four? I'm not sure if it's 75% territory needed for a plus four. Yes, it is. So there we go. 30 seconds, cutting that timer just a little bit more. Just to add insult to injury to Galo Neal. Fantastic job. Really, really well played, Eugen means that Eugen's going to be moving on to the final as he begins to clean up the remainder of Gallo Neal's Panzer Grenadiers. Here's the rain, those half tracks, poor chaps getting surrounded and killed off. Congratulations to Eugen for winning the semi-final 2-1 over Gallo Neal. 28 minutes and 50 seconds it took in the final game to find that victory. 2,805 kills to 1,345 losses, showing why Eugen loves his first Panzerna so damn much. Gallo Neal not being able to perform on his 21st Panzer, unfortunately. That was his second attempt at making the division work and was ultimately his downfall in this game. Look at this Staghound. This is what I wanted to see at the end of this game. How much work that Staghound did. It did find the kill onto the Panzer IV G in the end. It took out two 259s, took out the 222, killed off the 257, took out an AT gun even, and a couple units of Panzergrands. Fantastic work done by this Staghound. Sexton was exactly what Eugen needed to clean up more Pack 38s, and although the Sexton only found a kill onto one of them, the pinning of the 25 pounder moving forwards was of course very helpful. Cromwell 4 came in, found two kills onto the 259s on the bottom side. Cromwell 6 did kill off a pack 43 on the top and this Firefly also did quite a lot of work coming in to blunt the push that Galonia was making with his Brumba, with his S307 pack. You can see all of those units that were part of that push taken out as well as the pack 43 that was pinned by the 25 pounder later on. This Sherman 5 came in, survived, took out plenty of Panzergrens and the U304s, and the 17 pounders, of course, arriving in phase C with their veterancy, cleaning up a lot of the Panzer 4s that uh, Galonia was trying to use to fend off the push coming through from, um, from Eugen. Ultimately, I think there was room for a King Tiger in this game, and it might have helped Galonia solidify his lead on the top side. But I think Eugen was just doing so much damage across the entire map that Gal couldn't afford to reinforce with that many points into one unit. And uh, honestly, I feel like Eugen would have just been able to reply with maybe smoke from a 25 pounder or something and then get a shot in with a 17 pounder anyway. So yeah, there was there was plenty of ways that Eugen could have dealt with that King Tiger. And I can see why Galania would avoid bringing it in. But um, 
It just felt like without it, he was doomed to fail anyway. And uh, there you have it. That's it. That's going to be the semi-final complete. And we'll be moving on to the final next. Actually, I might do the third round final first. And then we'll do the actual final, uh, depending on which games are played. But um, yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. This leaves Eugen versus A. Lennart in the final of the Great Paradox Tourney. Galonia will be taking on Neff in the third place final. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.